So last week in episode 14, I introduced you guys onto this new book called Notes on the Somali Language. And I mentioned that the author uses a ch sound in it, which I had never heard in the Somali language before. And I just kind of came outright and said, that isn't how Somali is written. And the reason why ch is in there is because this was written before Somali writing was standardized. However, I received some really interesting messages. You know, I received messages, a couple of emails from people and a few messages in the comments saying, people in the North actually pronounce j as a ch, right? So, you know, a word like jog sot, they might say like chog sot. There's a little bit of a ch rather than a j. And those sounds are really similar, right? So that's very plausible, right? And I'm, I'm sure that, that does exist, right? And there's lots of people who are from Somaliland and, you know, other places in the, in the more rare wakoyi, more, more northern parts of Somalia, who do speak like that. And that's entirely fine, right? If people speak like that, that's news to me. And thank you very much for informing me on that. However, when I came and came back to this book, I thought I'd investigate it a little bit. And um, it actually transpires that the answer is much more interesting than that. It's actually not just, but because he uses a J in here as well. You know, all the words that we know to have a, have a J in them, he writes them with a J in here. So I wanted to kind of, uh, kind of search out other examples of words that he uses in here where he uses the ch. And I think some of them, some of them will surprise you. So like many languages books, Kirk actually begins this book with a kind of glossary of the alphabet, of how to actually pronounce the words in the alphabet. And when we come to this ch sound, he says, pronounce like ch in lock. I don't know how that word lock is pronounced. I think people in the north pronounce, uh, people in Scotland pronounce it loch. But there's a ch sound already in Somali that he has documented in here. And he also says in the early introduction of the book, he actually says that, that these guttural sounds need to be just heard by ear. So he's not really expecting us to have a sound for it in English. So, um which makes me feel like it's not a J sound. And then also just to give you some examples of some of the words that he actually gives to, um, for the letter J. You know, one of them is the word Jal, he writes. I mean, I think he means Jal, um, but Jal is the way that he writes it, to mean to like something. There, there is a word to like something, you say, you know, Wahan Jalahai, something, something. You know, I, I, I love something or I like something. He also gives the word in here, Jedel, to mean a whip. You know, it's it's a bit of a stretch, but I, I think that might have a shared origin with Arabic. You know, in, in Arabic, there is the word jild, meaning skin. And it's there's also the verb that comes from it, which means to whip someone or to kind of lash someone. It's, you know, it's, you know, it's, it's a word that most people know. So, um, uh, but but this is this is jedel. It's not jeled, right? So so the, the, the consonants are kind of switched around. And I've not really known Somali to have a habit to do that when it borrows words from other languages. So um, yeah, I'm not really sure. That's just a little bit of a stretch. But either way, okay, so he doesn't use this ch sound for those. He doesn't say chedel. You know, he doesn't say ch'al. You know, when he says, you know, wahan ch'al, he, he doesn't write it like that, right? But what he does do, let me give you some examples of some of the things that he uses and see if you can guess what, what Somali sound he's actually trying to replicate using ch. So he says mochol. I think most of us know he's probably not saying mochol. You know, we can probably guess that he's saying makal. Example number two is tachsir. I mean, really, this is probably taqsir, right? Meaning a punishment or, yeah, a punishment. It's not really like a torment or anything. It's just a punishment. And it's kind of synonymous with um, with the word iqab as well that exists in Somali as well as Arabic. And by the way, as a disclaimer, I'm not claiming that people that he's heard in the north of Somalia actually say it like that, right? I'm, I'm not claiming that he's heard people who say mochol. People don't say wahan mochlai. I'm assuming that he's trying to recreate that uh, sound with a ch. So let's end the lesson reading a nice little sentence that he has in the back of this book. I mean, it's really nice actually. I mean, the book is only, what, 100 pages, but there's about five pages or so, five, 10 pages in the back, which are just full of really useful sentences that he thought he would share with us. And I really like phrases, you know, like when I learn languages, I like to just kind of memorize loads of phrases and, and then you eventually just kind of find ways to squeeze them into your into your conversations and stuff. And because you have them memorized, you can just reel them off and you sound really fluent and stuff too. So anyway, let's have a little read of one because there's a couple of examples of this use of ch in this sentence. So let's have a read through it. So we have nemankas hojuddi Yai somain tachsir, or taksir is what it should really be, I believe. Delin um, bay nochoden, or nokoden. So, nimankas, you know, we're saying those men. Um, we actually, I think we might have said nimankan last lesson, but nimankas, um, we, we, kind of, we kind of covered this concept in the previous lesson. Go, go, go back to um, day 17 in my Somali diary if you're interested in how we say, like, those men and these men and those men all the way over there. Nimankoyi. Um, Okay, so nimankas, um, the, those men, hujuddi yeisomain, they they committed a, they committed a, 
a crime or something, or they made a they made a crime. So some a really means to make something or to or to, to kind of to do something, but but I assume that's kind of what it means. So tux, oh, it's written underneath. <laughs> it's written underneath it. Yeah, those those who committed th that crime. Maybe that's what the yay is the that crime. Hujuddi yay somein taksir delin baynok den. So so those men who committed that crime deserve the punishment of death. So we have the word taksir, right? Meaning. Um, the, the, the taqsir means the punishment, right? And then the the bay noqden. Noqden normally means to um, uh, to become something, really. I think, or um, maybe you guys can put it in the comments. Like I, I know there's an there's an ayah in the Quran in um, um, surah to, in surah al rum I think, where Allah says um, um, in a in a noqdan, something like that. Karkisa any noqdan. He says, like some of them, karkisa in a knockdown, that they may knock down, that they may kind of be become or they may return or something like that. The Arabic is la'allahum yurja'un, like maybe they will return or maybe they will kind of reconcile or might translate it, something like that. So, anyway, that's a nice little phrase for us to end the lesson on. If you enjoyed this video and I really hope you did, please don't forget to like and share it and never forget to subscribe to the channel. Also, whilst you're here, please go and check out my Patreon page and my community as well. I'd really, really appreciate it if you go over there just to learn a little bit more about what we're doing over there, what kind of incentives I'm giving people. Um, yeah, just what our kind of community are up to over there. So go and check it out, patreon.com forward slash Sam of Somalia. See you guys in the next one. Assalamu alaikum.